Welcome to another This Week in Rails. This week we have Patrick giving us the updates. And did you know you can go to world.hey.com or slash this.week.in.rails to get your own to sign up for the newsletter. I do not produce this newsletter, I just provide a video coverage of it. So let's dive right in. And so for the first item, use the error highlight gem to locate the columns where an error was raised. And I'm super excited about this one because if you've ever gotten an error while you're developing, you may see a similar error message. However, this new change will highlight the row that caused the error. And not only that, but the area of code that had that problem. And that's going to be super helpful in situations where you have something like a current user.id is equal to some object.id. Because if one of those is nil, you really don't know which one it is. And so with this, it would actually highlight the area of code so you know which one was the nil object. So instead of doing a binding.pry or some puts debugging, you're going to be able to see where the issue is almost immediately. And the next one is also really exciting. So I've been doing the bin rails routes dash G or the dash dash grep to search my rails routes to find a certain path. However, I usually just give it a controller name or some kind of action to get the results. But now you're going to be able to do the similar thing, but also search the URI patterns. And that's going to be especially helpful in situations where you're not putting in some kind of colon ID, but you're putting in the actual value and it'll basically interplate it in and find the appropriate matches. And that's going to be very helpful in situations where you don't always know what the exact route is or which controller action is hitting it. And so now you'll be able to just do the rails routes dash G paste in the URI pattern and it'll find all the appropriate matches. And next we have do not return CSP headers for 304 not modified responses. And this is an interesting one that you may not come around too often. So there was a CVE fixed. And after that fix, Rails would send the CSP headers, which is the content security policy headers for every response, even if it did not contain any HTML or if a 304 not modified was sent. And the issue around that is when you have a 304 not modified, then you're basically serving the cache content. But if the content security policy headers were updated, and if there were any script tags that had a nonce, then when the browser tries to validate that those are legitimate and not some kind of cross-site scripting attack, then it could lead to unexpected behaviors. So in this fix, whenever Rails is sending a 304 not modified response, Rails is just going to omit the content security policy headers from that response. And the last item is normalized virtual attributes on active record persistent becomes. And this issue is found when you use the becomes method. So let's say if you have a client class and they're inheriting from the company, when a client becomes company, any of the virtual attributes, you could receive some errors around the extra attributes, but now the becomes method will adapt those attributes from the target class. And there are 24 contributors to the Rails framework this past week. So again, as in every week, I would like to just thank each one of these people for their contributions to the Rails framework, making it a better product. And especially a lot of the newcomers who are making their first commits to the Rails framework. I really appreciate your contributions. Well, that's all for this week in Rails. Thanks for watching.